Hi, this is Larry with Man Cave Mayhem. If you haven't yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like my videos. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get to you as soon as possible. Yamaha started production of the TW200 in 1987 and it is still in production today. Uh, the particular model I have is a 1989 TW200, so it was a couple years after it was in production. But uh, I picked this thing up for 150 bucks and I'm just going to show you how we went through it and got it cleaned up and got it running. The only upgrade that they did was in 2001 where they added a disc brake to the front and they actually, I think, downgraded it by removing the Kickstarter. But other than that, the TW200 has remained the same up to the present time. So scoring this uh, older TW200 for 150 bucks, it's well worth putting some time into it. So anyhow, on with the video. This is episode one, TW200 Rescue. What do you think, Mr. Andrew? I think it's blue. And this is the next project. Man Cave Mayhem finds another project. Unfortunately, they left it full of gasoline. So this I picked up for $250. I don't know if it was a mistake or not. Hopefully not. We're gonna try and get it running. We're gonna take you through that process. And we'll see if she, she still works. She got about, looks like 5,200 miles on it. Doesn't look like it was the best. It wasn't taken care of uh, very well, but, but we'll see. It's a, I think it's either an 89 or an 88. TW Yamaha 200, we'll see. If this was smell-o-vision, you'd be able to smell the nasty gas, but it's not. It is nasty gas. You can see the rust in the tank. This is not good. We'll see what happens. All right, we got the tank off. We're gonna go ahead and see what comes out of this thing. Oh yeah, that's, that's nasty. We're gonna call that nasty gas. Whenever somebody tells you that they drain the gas, never believe them. Because this is lacquer thinner now. So there we go. Alright, we got the carburetor out. This is what happens when you leave gas in things. Stuff seizes up. So this float is stuck. And it's nasty. The inside's a mess. So we are preparing to put it into the ultrasonic cleaner. That will work miracles for this baby. Because right now the slide won't even move in the carburetor. We cannot get it to budge. So we're ready to do it. Let's see what happens. So this is where we've gotten so far today. We've we got this thing torn down. And uh, I showed you before, but I'll show you the black hole of the gas tank. We'll give you a better picture of that later. But it's in pretty bad shape. Everybody, I can't tell you enough. Do not... Do not store your vehicles with gas in them. It just isn't the way to go. If you do it, it's gonna give you problems. So I'll say that again. Do not store your vehicles with gas in them because I'm gonna show you what it does, especially the nasty gas that we have now. You can kind of see in the tank all the crud. So that's the biggest negative so far. I've got everything torn apart on the bike. We pulled the carburetor off because it was obviously full of garbage. And uh, we've got that. Put that in the ultrasonic cleaner. It was all seized up. And uh, I got it broke down enough just to get it working. Uh, but you can see now the slide is actually working. So we got the slide working. Cleaned up pretty well. I got the float bowl and everything in there. Everything's clear. Pulled the jets. So we're going to throw it back together and see if it runs. I don't want to put a ton of time into this. But I paid 250 bucks for the bike. It's a, it was a manufactured, the manufacture date on the bike was a 10 of 88. So I'm assuming it's probably an 89 um, uh, TW200. So um, we're gonna see if this thing works. All the plastics are bleached out. Looks like the oil's been taken care of. The air filter was just recently cleaned because it's pretty clean and it's got you know, it's clean. It's got sticky oil in it. So somebody's taking care of that. So I'm assuming it is either abused for a long time or it was taken care of and just physically left out in the sun or something. So hope, hoping at least that it was taken care of and uh, the motor's in good shape. So 
but it definitely has compression and you know what I'm saying motors want to run so we're gonna have this thing running soon so I'll keep you posted as to how it goes all right there's the carburetor it's cleaned and back together we'll see if this helps get this machine running all right got this carburetor all back together so we're gonna set this thing aside and uh, I'm gonna show you something that I, I learned on YouTube University here I, everybody learned something on YouTube University but I thought this was kind of cool you just take a razor blade to restore the plastics because these are heavily oxidized and as you scrape it brings it down to the original blue color obviously it's time-consuming but I mean it'll actually bring it back to its blue original blue color you can see I did that here you can see where it shows on the, the Yamaha sticker showed there but we're gonna go ahead and do that we'll get that done but this is low on the priority list but I wanted to show you guys that you can do that and the way the guy did it is you bring it down to this color then you go go over it smooth it all out make sure everything's good and you take a heat gun to it and it kind of puts a, a shine to it so um, obviously you got to use a heat gun sparingly but that's the way he did it and it looked it made it come out like factory new so we're gonna try that because I don't want to spend a bunch of money on the plastics and stuff but right now we're gonna focus on this tank the tank is obviously nasty I got some uh, rust remover solution that I'll show you guys and we're gonna give it a shot so we're gonna prep that tank put yeah. into the tank um, I've seen this too on YouTube and they say that this will clean the rust out of the inside of the gas tank it's kind of expensive kind of pricey but you can reuse it so it's like uh, I think it was 25 bucks for a gallon and whatever you're doing has to be submerged in it so I'm hoping that I have enough I know the tanks a little bigger than the gallon but I'm hoping I have enough and I can seal it up enough to move the tank around and get that covered and get it taken care of but uh, so that's what we're gonna start now it has to be oil and gas free so what I did was I filled this thing up with Dawn, you know, put some Dawn dish soap in it, swished it around, got all the, as much of the loose rust out as I could, and also used a little Simple Green on the inside of it and rinsed it real well. So now we're going to start sealing it up and getting it ready for this, uh, we're going to get, get it ready for this uh, anti-rust metal rescue bath, rust remover bath. I'm going to take some of this Gorilla Tape and tape up the bottom of these where the petcock was and the uh, other crossover vent is. And I wanted to show you what the petcock looked like. Again, this is what happens when you leave gas in a, in a tank. Uh, it just destroys everything. So I'm going to have to look for a new petcock for this and uh, order that up. But anyhow, so we're going to go ahead and tape this up and then we're going to dump that a rust remover in there and hopefully we will we will have good success with that the good thing about this stuff is it's non-toxic and it doesn't hurt anything so it's kind of like water but it's not good that I spilled it because I didn't want to waste any of it so we're gonna leave that there and let her soak see what happens Got the tank set up over there while I'm waiting on that tank I took the rear uh, fender plastic off and I'm gonna start working that plastic like I showed you before with a little uh, cleanup as you can see here you can see how it's kind of cleaning that plastic up and getting it down to the nice pretty blue that it used to be so we'll start on that get back to it later it's a nice warm summer evening in Southern California, so I'm out here. I got everything uh, kind of stripped down on the bike now. I want to clean this up, kind of throw some uh, simple green on this bike and just kind of get some of the extra dirt off of it so I can see what's going on here. So I've taped up the intake uh, where the uh, carburetor was, and I'm just going to hose everything. I'm going to spritz it with some uh, simple green and hose everything down, clean this bike up a little bit. This thing's coming slow. I'm still waiting on the tank. I had to use some more of this stuff, this blaster uh, metal remover. I took out a bunch of crap out of this. It's looking pretty good, but it still needs to sit and soak probably for another 24 hours. And then I'm gonna drain it, see where it's at. 
and then we can start moving on with the project. I need to get uh, some new fuel lines for this. I'm gonna eventually get new tires for it, but we're gonna get it running first. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean the engine up and then we'll go ahead and change the oil. I got filter, oil filter coming for it and uh, we'll get that oil changed out. Got a new ignition switch coming for it. So uh, this thing should be ready to go here pretty soon. <laughs> Let that baby soak for a while and we'll hose it off just get some of the loose dust and dirt off of it okay so I, I got this gas cap all torn apart and cleaned it up it was pretty rusty but because they don't make these gas caps anymore and this is a California only bike and I don't want to spend the money to put a extra fuel tank on I'm gonna to try to reuse this gas tank the o-ring gasket is bad too and, and that, that obviously comes with the the gas cap which is like supposedly a hundred and some odd dollars but it's not even available so so what I'm gonna do is probably cut a new gasket out of some rubber for this uh, but I'm gonna get this back assembled and then we're gonna move on to the next step you know later on after I decide I'm gonna keep this bike or whatever I may put in a plastic tank and alleviate some of these rust issues and stuff but Right now, I just want to get it running and make sure it runs good and everything. So we're going to throw this back together and use it. All right, so I got this thing all back together. And I couldn't find a gasket. You can see that old gasket. It's big and flattened out and rotten. But I did find an oil filter gasket. It doesn't fit quite the same. It's a little loose. But it actually works well on the tank when I tighten the cap down. So we're going to give that a try and see how it works. A cheap fix there so we'll see if that works and if it does then we'll keep that on there for a while all right we're still waiting on parts for this thing you can see I started to clean in this fender to see how it would clean up so I'm gonna pull this fender off now while I'm waiting on parts clean this fender up I got this thing pretty cleaned up it still needs to be worked over a little bit but sure looks a lot better than this right so let's uh, get started on that front fender and we'll go from there. after I've scraped them down with a razor blade like I said I watch that on YouTube so we're always learning something from YouTube, but I scraped that down with razor blade and then I've taken a, some fine steel wool to it and I just rinsed it off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweat that, get it really warm with the uh, heat gun. And then I've taken my daughter's cricket and made some Yamaha emblems for this. So we'll see how this works out. But so far that's the rear fender. Saved me a lot of money on my $150 machine. The problem is, is we don't even know if it's going to run yet, but I think it's going to. Motors want to run. Now I got the fender. I got some emblems that I made on my daughter's Cricut. Who says crafting isn't fun? Now we're going to put these emblems on that fender and make this thing look brand new. It's going to be cool. All right, so here's the end result. There's the first one. And there's the second one. Two out of three ain't bad. The other one didn't work out. It was a little too big for this side. I could make a smaller one, but I think I'm just gonna leave it blank. That'd make a good Man Cave Mayhem sticker right there. So, I think that's what I we'll be saying this throughout the video, but do not leave gas in your tank. Look at this mess. This is just, this is after an hour of cleaning this tank out and shaking it out. I mean, it's clean now. You can see, it's pretty clean down in there. I, well, I hope you can see it, um, but it's just you can kind of see on the sides there, but it's just imperative that you get that gas cleaned out of the tank or don't store your bikes with gas in the tanks. I know I keep saying it, but it's very important. It's the difference between having a great bike for a long time or having a trash bike that you have to go through and really clean things up. This bike taking a lot of work just because of the gas. Issues. New pet cock for it, and looks like it'll work. It's a Chinese one, obviously, but uh, a little shorter on the intake for the uh, the gas. But um, so it'll notify you later on the reserve. So, but anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and try and get this put on and see how it looks. That's a new pet cock on. That's gonna allow us to get that. 
bike started a little quicker than I thought. So hopefully we can get this tank on, get the carburetor on, and get this thing going. I bought a cheap, I bought a cheap uh, Chinese carburetor and actually stole the diaphragm off of that for the original carburetor. And I think it's gonna work. So we're gonna try that first to see if that'll work. Where are we with this thing now? We, uh, I took the old grip off this cause it was torn up and I actually got the, the throttle working now. This was all gritty and nasty. So I pulled this all off, cleaned it up, um, lubricated the cable. And uh, now the carburetor's back in, carburetor's back in and uh, it's really close to getting ready to be started. So I need to, uh, do a few things to get make that happen but uh, I got to put the battery in it I got a new battery for it I also need to put the tank on but I'm kind of waiting on fuel line I might use some of this just to make you mouse it see if we can get this running I'm also waiting on this ignition switch uh, which is coming from China I think so you know how that goes so this is all taken apart right now so we'll see how it goes uh, see what I can get done here today and see if we can get this started eventually I'm gonna have to rebuild these shocks they're they're a little thrashed but we'll be ready to go here pretty soon uh, that's all for now I think it's time to activate the battery see if this thing's gonna fire over I put a little bit of gas in the cylinder we'll see if it fires over I think it will does for us here. batteries in this thing good news is well i hooked this up too for a, a trickle charger um that's always good to have on your bike just you know when you're not riding you can keep it hooked up it saves you money on batteries anyhow good news is i shot a little gas into the cylinder boom fired right up so we know this thing runs now so next thing is once we get our fuel lines hook the fuel lines up we'll throw the tank in and i'll show you guys how Thanks she's for watching the 1989 Yamaha TW200 Rescue Part 1. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and just remember I'm just a man in a cave causing mayhem. Thanks again for watching, folks.